What I'll talk in this video is about different misuses of statistical analysis. Well, statistical analysis is used in all kinds of riches, be it science, technology, engineering, mathematics, social science, uh, also in industrial research as well. But it is sometimes misused and I'm going to discuss the areas where it is often misused. The first one is in survey data analysis where the data collection in survey is oftentimes biased. It is quite biased, especially in offline surveys, offline surveys. In online surveys is a bit easier, but offline surveys are always difficult. So oftentimes uh, people don't spend time and effort to collect unbiased uh, data. And uh, what we see is that the sample of data that we get is often uh, not representative of the populations. Researchers uh, do not, uh, you know, give enough attention to the representativeness of the sample. And that's a major issue in, um, in statistical analysis. If the sample is not representative, then you cannot uh, infer anything from this analysis for the population. And then lack of access to proper data. This is again a problem in offline data uh, collection. Uh, in online data collection, it is somewhat easier nowadays because you know because uh, now it is much easier to get data from social media, from uh, other digital media. But offline is where you know there are a lot of uh, issues in collecting data. Um, so that's one issue, and it's very very uh, important to understand where exactly uh, you know we face such issues. One such example is the election forecasting, and you might have come across such you know news items, and this is one from BBC, uh, a very reputed uh, news agency out of UK. Election polling errors blamed on unrepresentative samples. So many election forecasting research companies or even the media companies, they uh, what they do is that they uh, collect data from a sample and then use some sort of statistic analysis to forecast the winner of the election. And oftentimes that turn out to be incorrect or wrong prediction. And many times it's because of the unrepresentativeness of the uh, sample used. And this is just one, you know, one such example. There are many such examples in many parts of the world. So please do not always believe the election forecast uh, that you uh, read on news, uh, uh, yeah, on uh, different news channels or uh, newspapers. Right. So there's another such uh, item where you know it is it is from the Wall Street Journal. Sorry, from the Harvard Business Review, where you know the the article goes like this: Why pollsters were completely and utterly wrong. Now, this article also deals with uh, the unrepresentativeness of the sample that was used for election forecasting, right? Um, the famous um, uh, election forecasting that went wrong was, uh, I think, the last U.S. election where, you know, people predicted, uh, you know, Clinton, Hillary Clinton to win, but uh, Donald Trump actually uh, won. But I'm not sure if it was because of the the statistical data, the issues with statistical data analysis, or there was something else. Uh, okay, so the other misuses also, for example, the misinterpretation of statistical significance, right? You might have uh, come across this p values, right? P statistics and t statistics. Oftentimes, this is these statistics are misused or misinterpreted. Um, like, you know, these are some of the sentences I've taken from the very famous uh, scientific research journal, Nature, where, you know, it says something like this, a statistically non-significant result does not prove the null hypothesis. You know, this is very misunderstood, actually, you know, you have to take into consideration other aspects of the data analysis before you can, you know, you can uh, come to a conclusion. But uh, this is, um, you know, sometimes not understood. The moment you see uh, the values are non-significant, you try to conclude uh, about everything related to the uh, population. But that's not always correct. Overstated claims and less famously led to claims of conflicts between studies where none exist. And by the way, these are uh, taken from scientific research where a great deal of time um, has been spent uh, to, you know, uh, to ensure that 
the data is correct, the analysis is correct, there is peer reviewed, even there, even there, you see overstated claims, less famously uh, claims and so on and so forth, even in scientific journals, uh, right. So p-value should be interpreted with other contexts such as interval estimates, okay, so, uh, and confidence levels and sample size and so on and so forth, right. It should not be interpreted just on standalone basis but on other aspect of the analysis. If the sample size for example is quite small, you have to be careful about whether you should uh, conclude something on this analysis or not. Even though the p-value says something like non-significant or significant, you should not uh, or you should be careful about making a conclusion. You have to, uh, you have to also give importance to other qualitative aspects of the analysis. So this is just one uh, article, I have found many articles on nature actually, where scientists rise up against statistical significance. So many scientists believe that, you know, people or researchers fudge their results based on statistical significance and uh, there are many occasions where uh, statistical significance has been challenged. Not just in scientific research but also in social science research, but in my view, I think uh, social scientists misuse statistical significance more than uh, scientists. Okay, and then the other issue is not using interval estimates. Uh, it's a big issue actually, you know, it's uh, also a big issue in, uh, in uh, industry. Uh, this is my experience, by the way. Um, researchers focus too much on point estimates, okay, uh, but they seldom focus on the interval estimates or the confidence bound, you know, these things. Um, okay, they're not the same by the way. Huh? So, but but the, what you understand what I mean, you know, it's also you have to uh, give importance to the uh, confidence level of that particular estimation. For example, the price of a given stock is forecast to be $1,000. Okay, to a, a general audience, that's like, that sounds like, okay, so you are able to forecast it quite accurately, maybe that's good. But what is not often given importance or attention to and the general readers of that particular news articles may not be able to understand that the confidence bout is quite wide, maybe for, for a given stock. Say for example, it lies between $600 to $1,300. That means um, the stock price could go down to as low as $600 and the investor might lose money on that. But he probably hasn't been informed about these confidence levels used for this statistical research. But in investment decision, what matters a lot is the volatility, the volatility of the stock price, right? It's not just the actual stock price, but it also the variation of the stock price. So what matters is not just the mean, the mean, forecasted mean, but also the variance, okay? And what people normally do is that they forecast the mean, do not talk anything about the variance and you know, it's, it's more like misleading people, normal people who do not really understand such analysis. Then uh, ignoring model assumptions and this is a very, very common issue found in all kinds of research, not just in scientific research, big time in social science research, industrial research, you just name it. All, you know, as someone said, uh, all models are wrong, some are useful. That means models cannot always forecast things perfectly. Models cannot always give a correct relationship between, you know, uh, variables, right? They are very useful sometimes, but uh, many a times they are not at all useful. They could give you misleading, misleading results. So therefore, it's very important to understand where a given model works, where the assumptions are met and where they do not meet. Uh, and as you know, statistical models have several assumptions, many assumptions, right? In all statistical models, you have like lots of assumptions. One, uh, like some of the very common assumptions are like normality of errors, linearity, homoscedasticity, uh, autocorrelation, right? There's lots of lots of um, such uh, assumptions associated with these statistical modeling techniques. Uh, but the real world is different. The real world data sets do not meet these criteria many a times. Uh, at least one of these criteria or some of these criteria. But researchers without treating this uh, assumption properly, they go ahead with uh, doing the research and communicating the results to the general public where 
the criteria are not met and that's basically wrong research and the conclusion drawn from that particular research is also wrong and could be misleading oftentimes so that's one thing even in high quality research you know the so called high quality research in social science have come across where you know people talk about the assumption but when it comes to the conclusion part of it they start making tall claims right in political science in sociology in nutrition science in economics also where people start making tall claims based on on their regression models and so on whereas you know they have discussed about why this particular data set uh, does not meet the assumption of that particular model right so that's a misleading normal audience uh, that do not understand these assumptions and then this is again a very common issue correlation is not co causation right you i'm sure you know about this that many times we see relationship between variables that does not mean that one causes the other or you can predict uh one variable using other other such you know completely uncorrelated unco rather completely different variables right these are noise but no pattern right you have to understand what a noise is from the pattern uh maybe for forecasting it is somewhat useful i know that some uh, you know researchers in finance actually they use uh, completely unrelated variables for forecasting to some extent it could work especially in machine learning kind of uh, research where what matters is you know uh, forecasting something right relationship between your target variable and your independent variables perhaps matters less uh, but in statistical research where theory matters a lot you have to check the distributions and you have to check the assumptions what matters is to differentiate correlation from causation uh, here is an example where you know the iphone sells um is quite related to uh, you know people dying from falling down stairs right you see that there is a direct correlation right it seems like there is a strong correlation but it's it's spurious it's called spurious correlation spurious correlation and uh, we should not ignore such uh, you know such relationship we should uh, we should never say that you know the iphone sales are directly related to people dying falling down stairs so that's not correct there are also such other example and i have taken these examples from very reliable sources um okay the past values may not always predict the future values and this is important especially in the prevailing times uh, in the times of corona where a lot of people started modeling the future behavior of uh, corona infections okay there were many models built by many universities consulting firms research forms uh, by specialists by not so specialists right uh, to forecast the the number of cases of corona but most of the models uh, were wrong they could not predict uh, the corona virus cases uh, why because most of these models were time series models they were time series model they were so the researchers were thinking that the past values will forecast the future but that's not always the case time series analysis is not always uh, correct actually you have to take into consideration other aspects other uh, causal variables as well um so you know and sometimes no matter how wonderful you are at modeling you simply cannot forecast right if something is evolving something is totally unknown and you have no domain expertise in that area you probably won't be able to forecast just by using some statistic no uh, techniques no matter how well you are well versed with statistical analysis then there's some other fallacies okay this for example poor data quality uh, is goes without saying you need high quality data to do forecasting or any kind of statistical analysis you simply cannot do uh, you know statistical analysis when you have um, poor quality data okay Uh, as they say it's you know garbage in garbage out the data quality is bad the results will also be bad uh, no distinction between opinion and facts and this is again a big problem in uh, the data journalism in data uh, journalism where people use data uh, but what they essentially use is opinion of people but not the facts and they don't do a distinction Uh, and that's wrong actually right you know we should make a distinction between opinion and facts 
um, selective use of statistical test results often by politicians right and this is i'm sure you are familiar you, you are aware of these you have come across such as cases where you know famous politicians from even from the developed world they use very selectively some statistical analysis or data to voice their opinion to justify their actions and so on and so forth and then over generalization right this is again a big problem right you take a small sample and then you do some analysis and then what you found out is that you know ah well this is working fine you know so let's uh, put it out for the pub uh, for the public to use but that's not always true for example the corona vaccine thing that we are doing now right vaccination uh, where it might work for some people but you cannot generalize it unless you have done it for sufficient number of people so that's why you have different stages of also trial and you know it is done across many kinds of people across many countries and so on and so forth so just to be 100 percent sure that it is working fine and then false conclusion on uh, causality and this is again a big problem in social science in data and journalism where journalists they conclude uh, based on causality when there is no causality at all um, it's also by the way very big time misused in uh, food science uh, in food science also it is uh, big time used, misused and in all social sciences also big time misused no proper treatment to outliers another big problem especially the non-specialists who are doing statistical research they simply don't know how to treat outliers they either they completely remove them or they keep it in the analysis and both are both could be um, misleading the results could be biasing the results and there is no proper analysis proper treatment uh, done to the outliers and the last one which is the most important one of all these is the low sample size uh, if you do not have a good sample size a proper sample size and i cannot say what is a proper sample size it depends on the problem at hand uh, you cannot draw any conclusion from this analysis. The conclusion drawn will be simply overgeneralization or simply wrong. Okay, so that's something to be very, very careful about. So these are some of the areas where statistical analysis is often misused. Thanks.